guys. Welcome to the show. I'm Elsa Kurt, and this is the Writer's Tribe Talk Show. And today I have a great guest on. Her name is Katie Civitelli, and she is the author of the Fallen Light series. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to have you here. This is going to be so fun. Your covers look so gorgeous. I can't wait to hear about this series. Thank you. But I'm going to, I'm going to, kind of backtrack a little bit. I want to hear a little bit about your background. How long you've been writing? When did you get this writing bug? I like to call it. (laughs) So I've been writing on and off basically my whole life. Um, but I never had confidence in my work. So it's, it was always hidden on my computer. And until, until one day I actually got laid off from a job. And it was a job I really liked, but it was in the middle of COVID and they didn't need me. So I said, you know what? I want to write a book. I've wanted to write a book for years, never finished one. And I said, I'm going to sit down and write a book. And it was supposed to be one book turned into three books. So (laughs) um, so, yeah, so that's kind of what happened with that. And I was just going through a lot mentally at the time. And it was just a good outlet. So, but I just, I've written forever, honestly, and now I actually say, like, I'm a writer, like, actually, I'm a writer, so that's cool. Um, I hear that all the time from writers, that they can't really feel comfortable saying that they're a writer, or they're, they're an author, and, you know, the truth of the matter is, as soon as you start writing, you are absolutely a writer, and when you publish, you're absolutely an author, and the other thing that I heard you say was uh, that this really started for you, like kicked into high drive during COVID. And I I think that's so awesome. You know, if anything could come out of COVID for people, I think it's for, for writers that, you know, this was like the catalyst, the moment where you said, I've got this time on my hands to actually do this thing that I've been dying to do. And uh, kudos to you for actually doing it because there's so many people that say they're going to do it and want to do it, but you did it. So that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. Um, now, now tell me the inspiration behind the, the book. Well, technically the series, but essentially the first book, what was the inspiration for that? So the inspiration was, um, it's a little dark. So I'm it, the story itself is, but it's a little dark. So, uh, friends of mine and myself, we have battled depression, anxiety, um, everything, in that kind of scope for many years. Um, And there's a lot of people in my life that don't understand the signs of it. They don't understand what that means. So when someone has anxiety and um, they will turn around and go, why are you sad? And I say, I'm not sad. That's not what it means, but you know, I can't fault them. They don't understand it. So I wanted to put it into a story. I want a best way to explain these nice people to where they can understand it, they visualize it. So I wanted to put it into a story. There's a lot of personal experiences in the story that people who are very to me will be able to put it out. Um, but yes, that's where that came from. And I also wanted people to experience these feelings and these mental illnesses to know that they're not alone. Somebody understand, somebody out there saying I'm like I do understand you are not alone you are working in this world. Um it's helped a few people there and say that so that was the mission of the book it was just I just want to help people and they love fantasy and I said fantasy makes sense because you can explain things visually. So that to me it's a lot easier to understand that fantasy story rather than make a clinical book that just explain so I, came I, from. I love that I so love much that so- and what a, a great time for it to again to bring it back to COVID um, I, I think that was a time or has been a time it's not fully over of course um, that people have been struggling so much and to be struggling and to feel isolated already in those feelings and then to be truly and literally physically isolated from other people has been so incredibly detrimental to people's mental health. So to be able to have something like this, these books and these stories and the way that you're doing it, 
um, to give them that I think is so incredible. And so really, honestly, so, so gracious of you to, cause you're really putting yourself into that. You're putting, you're pouring your heart into that and your own experience. And that makes you vulnerable. And I, I think that's one of the magical things about writing that, you know, no matter what you're writing, unless you're writing a manual for something, um, you're, you're putting so much of yourself into it and that makes you so vulnerable. So that takes a lot of uh, courage and grace to, to do that. So I, I commend you so much thank you it's terrifying <laughs> yeah it totally is it totally is don't you feel tell me about when you first published because i i have a feeling for all of us it's 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 you're gonna say all very relatable feelings um how did you feel when you saw that book on like amazon for example when you publish i was excited um because it was real it hadn't really sunk in um but at the same time when I saw it up there and people started buying it, I went, oh my God, <laughs> like, this is in the world now. This like <laughs> strangers that I don't know are going to be reading this book. And I was like, okay. And it was like, it was very, it was so many, so many emotions. I was excited and terrified yeah, yeah. and oh my goodness. And like happy. And then I was like, what have I done? And so it was, it was quite a lot going on in my brain. Yeah, but. it's an emotional roller coaster, right? Yeah. You're like, you're happy, you're scared, you you're nauseated, you're, <laughs> right? You're like, what if you like it? Oh my gosh! And yes. so it's, oh yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. How um have you? I I didn't look at your reviews. I apologize. Um, how do you how do you feel about reviews? I, I'll I'll tell you after how I how I feel about them, but I'm curious how you feel about reviews. Did you get any bad or negative reviews? So so far, um, the last time I checked it, because I try not to check it very often, just because it gets into your brain. Absolutely. Um, just in case you get the bad review. But the last time I checked it, I actually had pretty good reviews on it. Um, oh, there were a couple that just blew me away. One made me cry, I, like in a good way. And um, it just, I can't believe that they're talking about something I wrote. It's so amazing, it's, isn't it? It's, it's, an, it's such an incredible experience. Yeah. I And the reason why I asked that is because, you know, we as authors, we talk so much about um, getting reviews, needing reviews, wanting reviews, all of those things. But you, you said the most important thing, I think that every author needs to needs to do the same thing that you do, which is try not to look at them, <laughs> avoid them, uh, like the plague really, you know, which is kind of like a double-edged sword. You know, you have to ask for them. You need them to boost your, your, um, uh, place there on Amazon and other places, but at the same time, you don't want to read them, you know, even the good ones really, because like you said, it gets in your head and really what you want to be able to do is just write, just write the books and put them out there, send them out in the universe and, and all of that. Right. Reviews are so important, but on the flip side, it's just, I love getting them. I, I don't want to read them. <laughs> but yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, for readers, keep reviewing books for authors, keep not reading reviews. <laughs> you know, somebody else said this, I read this somewhere and I, and I wish I could give proper credit, but somebody said, um, you know, when you think about reviews as an author, um, remember that the reviews aren't for you. The reviews are for other readers. So, you know, even a negative review can be a, have a positive impact because somebody will say, my God, why did they hate that book so much? I have to go read it and find out why. So you never know. So, you know, best to ignore them all. <laughs> it's true. And it's like some of them I like because like I did read some of them because it's good constructive criticism. Like you sit there and you go, okay, why didn't they like this book? You Absolutely. know, after you kind of get out of the headspace of, oh my gosh, they didn't like my book. Um, you're like, okay, why, why didn't this person like it? What can I do to better, like make this better the next time? Um, such a great attitude to have about it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a work in progress, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect. No, you have a great, you really do. Honestly, you have such a great headspace about how to process that and how to handle it. It's a great lesson for any new aspiring authors listening and watching right now. So thank you for, for helping those. You know, I love that too. That part of what I love about doing this is that we get to give the, the hand up 
to people who aren't where we are yet. So it's really exciting. I love that. Um, I would love to know. So you said this is going to be, this is a three book series so far. Could it be more than that? Um, so I do have plans to leave it somewhat open-ended nice. to a point. Um, the story itself is going to conclude, but I'm going to leave it open-ended for a few of the characters in case I want to backtrack and see what these characters are up to or um, do like a novella at some point as little stories of like this character's adventures or something because that's one thing that does get to me sometimes when authors leave the story, like they they don't they leave it to the point where they can go back to it, but they don't go back to it ever do. And you sit there and you're like, I have so many questions. And it's yeah, just yeah. I don't feel satisfied at the end. It's like I have that feeling so much with books that I don't want my readers to feel like that. I'm like, I understand. Yes. So, oh, yeah. I love that. I love, love, love that. Cause I agree with you completely. Like there's so much you could, you know, I, I always, when I'm reading a book or finish a book, I'm like, Oh, I, I absolutely. I want to know more. I want to know more about this yeah. character, you know, where they ended up. And uh, I love mm-hmm. side stories like that. So I'm really excited that you're going to do that. Uh, so you. book one is out and that is, what's the title of that one? So that is Fallen Light. Beautiful. My baby. That's there. gorgeous. Uh, so thank you. Yes. That's Fallen Light. Um, the second book does have a cover and it has um, a title. It's that one is Shattered Heart. Um, the third one is So I am currently, we don't have any title or artwork for it at the moment. Um, but we'll get there. So yeah, absolutely. We'll oh, that'll be fun. So wait, are all three, all three are completely written? I mean, of course, the first one is, but the second two, are they completely written or are you in process? The third one's in process. Okay. Um, the second one is completely written. I actually finished that book. I finished writing it a month and a half after I finished writing Fallen Light. So nice. that, both of those are finished. Um, but the third one's halfway. It's it's at the halfway point. So very cool. So now when you wrote this series, or of course I know you're in process, but when you wrote this, did you think, okay, once I've written this, I'm done. Like I, I did what I set out to do and I'm done. Or is it I is the the writing, you know, hook in you and you plan on writing more and different things? Oh, the hook is in. <laughs> the hook is in. Um I Honestly, since I was a kid, I have wanted to be a published author. I wanted to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. Like, I've always wanted that. So that is, for a while, there were people in my life telling me that's not a career. You can do that. You're not going to make money. negative. And finally, I just, you know what? I can do it. Why can't you do it? So that is the goal. I am going to keep writing, and I'm just going to keep putting books out and I just I like making people happy and writing makes me happy so I just all happen around yes yes oh, oh. absolutely and it's so important what you said there too about writing for the joy of writing um and doing it because it's something that you love and you have a passion for because I think so many people um give up on the notion because of other people telling them oh it's never going to be this or it's never going to be that nobody can tell you that you know nobody nobody should be telling anybody what they cannot do you know and fortunately you and me and other people um have that thing in them i think that says go ahead tell me what i can't do and i'm going to show you what i can do so um but not everybody has that spirit you know so i hate to hear anybody discouraging anyone. So it's great advice to, to encourage people to just write, just do it for the love of it. And, you know, you keep working at your craft, right? You keep learning new things about it. It's such a great experience overall. It really is. Yeah. That's what everything never give up on it. If you believe in something enough, there's no reason you can't do it. Like, yeah, do it. Absolutely. you happy there's enough in this world that doesn't make people happy so just do something that makes you happy so so true oh absolutely now tell me a little bit about um did you self-publish or traditional publishing so i self-published it um i 
kind of battled back and forth on which road to go down. Um, but I did end up self-publishing the book. I'm self-publishing the second one as well. Um, so that has been a challenge in itself, um, just because there's a lot of promoting that goes into it. There's a lot of pros and there's a lot of cons, but there's a lot of promoting that goes into it. And I'm not the greatest person on that aspect of it. <laughs> so um, it's very difficult for me to like, be like, here's my work, read my work. Like I'm, I just, I'm like, I would, I want to sit back and write myself. I agree with you. There's pros and cons to both. Um, I, I, Personally, if I had to pick, I, I will pick self-publishing over traditional every day. And that's no disrespect to traditional publishers out there who are scowling, you know, when they hear things like that. Um, but, you know, like you said, there's so much that goes into it and so much you're responsible for. But um, but at the end of the day, you're the one that has all the control. You have control over the covers. You have control over, you know, every aspect, which for me is a, is a great thing. It turns out I'm a control freak. <laughs> you, right, right. Things you learn yeah. about yourself in this process. And um, you, you said some other things that are so relatable too about preferring to just write your books and be in your space and do that part and not have to do the other part. And I think you speak for so, so many of us that, you know, we're, I think the majority of us are introverts, you know, which we're not shy, you know, we can do people, right? But- we just prefer to, yes. you know, lay low in our cave and not yes. deal with people. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's so true. So now um, have, I know with COVID that, that put a damper on so many things, but have you been able to do any author events, any book signing events or anything like that since you've published? So I haven't, um, I have started to research how to do some, there's some places that um, I'm actually looking into to see if they would be able to have me on. Um, this point, I'm really getting into book to kind of take stuff, um, and I want to try to do something with both of the books um, at that point. But because of COVID, it was so hard. The book out was so hard, and nobody was doing anything. So now I'm like trying to ramp up and trying to figure it out. <laughs> yeah oh i i know it changed i i get it i was doing so many events pre-covid and then everything just came to a screeching halt and now it's like now it's hard to get motivated to be honest with you it's hard for me to get motivated to get back out there again like that but we must we must to some degree, at least. <laughs> oh, so um, one one last question. Tell me what has been the best part of this experience for you. I think the best part was actually finishing a book. Um, I I used to write like crazy, um, but I could never finish. An actual story. I, I just couldn't do it. And granted, book three is not yet, but I wrote the ending to it already. So, and I had finished this first one, and then I finished a second one, and that was such a big accomplishment that I couldn't really, and it was actually like a good story. And I just went, oh my goodness, I finished it. Like, I actually, I sat there for a second, and I went, I finished this. Like, there's an ending. And so that was very exciting. And I actually dedicated the first book to my fifth grade teachers because they um they were the ones that told me you lift and you never give up and you never forgot that. And I'm in my late 20s now. So oh, that's um, beautiful. I love that. That is so sweet. Um I it's so true having someone or someone's in your life that stay in your head like that and keep you motivated and inspired to to accomplish a, a dream like that is just such a special thing i'm so glad you had someone in your life that did that for you and they must have been blown away do they know that they're um, they do. i actually did get a hold of them through um mutual contacts actually and they so happy they were just like oh my god I was like I never forgot so uh -huh. I knew 
hired me and I finished it. So here you go. So um, I sent That's a beautiful. couple of them. So. That is so, so cool and beautiful and sweet. I love that. That's awesome. Um, now tell everyone where they can find you, where they can find your books and, and all that good stuff. So my books are up on Amazon. Um, the first one is, the second one is coming out on April 30th. Um, so we just finished formatting and um, I'm in the process of getting that pre-order status up. And so I'm on Amazon, um, I'm on Instagram. So um, Instagram handle is at Katie's author. Um, Facebook, I'm not as big of a on Facebook as I am on Instagram, but it's up there. Um, and I do have a website that is actually you can find it through my Instagram page. So um, for any like I'll come and use new books and everything. So Awesome. That awesome. is that fantastic. fantastic. Well, I would well, love to have you come back on uh, when your next one is released and we can talk about that and get everybody the, the exciting details. And uh, I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations on writing this fabulous series with those gorgeous, gorgeous book covers. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing what you're going to do next with all this. It's great stuff. Thank you so much. And yeah, my friend did the book covers and he is an amazing artist. So kudos to him because beautiful. They bring you away too. So yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> All right, guys. This has been the Writer's Tribe Talk Show with Katie Civitelli, author of Fallen Lights series. Go check it out on Amazon and we will see you in the next episode. Take care.